exhibition, just that's a little bit of the history of the Paul Manchester Railway, and we'll come back to that when we go through to the next building, um, which is one of the warehouses. Um, but this set of engravings was done for just after the opening of the Paul Manchester Railway in 1830, and it shows some of the stations along the way and the kinds of locomotives that were used on the railway. And the point about the link to slavery here is that it's a really, really pretty obvious one. The whole the big reason why a railway was built between Liverpool and Manchester was that Liverpool was where the raw cotton came in from a lot from the United States and, and other parts of the Americas. And Manchester was the distribution centre and the for both raw cotton and finished cotton after raw cotton had been made into finished goods. So Manchester is a key point in then moving the raw cotton onto other places and in the opposite direction, feeding the finished goods into Manchester, going through the Manchester Cotton Exchange, out to Liverpool and out for export. So good transport between Liverpool and Manchester was really critical to the ongoing success of the Lancashire cotton industry. And in the 1820s, what was the best way to do that was the, the whole new idea of the railways. So, goods transport was very much at the heart of the building of Liverpool and Manchester Railway, but the Liverpool and Manchester Railway was groundbreaking in that right from the beginning it's intended to carry passengers just as much as, as it's intended to carry goods, whereas the railways that had come before it, the main one being the Stockton and Darlington Railway, were all about moving goods, and mainly about coal, taking coal from the pit head to the marketplace. Liverpool and Manchester Railway was about moving people, because a lot of people engaged in the cotton trade had to travel between Liverpool and Manchester to go to the exchanges to do their business. Um, and also goods, but not just cotton, a whole wide range of goods. Livestock and um, grain and all kinds of foods to feed people. A wide range of goods, the widest possible range of goods. So Liverpool and Manchester Railway is the first modern railway. It's the, it's the blueprint that the rest of the railway network is based on. And um, because it started off carrying passengers, it was so successful, it was overwhelmingly successful, it was actually, they carried, they, within a month they were carrying five times as many passengers as they'd actually targeted for. And that meant that they didn't have enough locomotives to, to actually carry out good services as well. So actually they had to wait till December 1830 when they had more locomotives delivered. But the very first goods train that arrived in Manchester from Liverpool a big part of the cargo was American cotton. And of course, in 1830, again, this is American cotton growing on cotton plantations, mainly in Georgia and Carolinas, and you know, grown by slaves. So this whole station, between 1830 and you know, shortly after the end of the American Civil War, a huge amount of cotton was stored on this site, which was grown by slaves in America. Um, can I just say, um the thing about the, the railway is that the railway is part of the natural progression of moving goods. Because prior to the railway, if you ever notice, all the mills were always built by canals. Yeah. So that the, the canal barge could just come right beside the mill and the crane picks it up and straight into the, into the mill. But canal barges were really, really slow. They'd be there chugging at one, two miles an hour. And so it took a long time and plus you had to stop when you got through the, the, the locks and did the lock thing and, and stuff like that. You, have to, you used to have queues and queues of barges queuing up waiting to go through these canals. So the, the railway was just part of a logical progression really of speeding up the process of moving that, that cotton around. But the most important thing is, does anybody know why the North West in particular was chosen as the, the area for cotton production? Does anybody know why? Both, yeah, because in order to spin cotton properly, it needs to be damp. If cotton, if you try and spin cotton in a hot country, it snaps when it's dried out. And so for cotton to be spun properly, it had to be damp. And so the Northwest rain damp, as you know, was the natural choice for it. And this is why we ended up with cotton here in the Northwest. For that simple reason, that the Northwest was damp and wet constantly all the time. Yeah.